All right, well, it took me a little while to get it all down cleanly and then get everything cleaned up, but I got the aluminum down. Uh, then I took the redwood off. I've got the bulk of the nails pulled. You can still see some rosin paper up there, but we're going to have to pull some more when the roof goes on. And I got my walls figured. Here's a line for this exterior wall, which is nice and 90 degrees off of that wall because this is supposed to be where the shower goes. There's my other shower wall, if you can see the line. The wall of the house leans out a little bit, so I'm actually uh, over there. From there to the top plate, the wall leans out almost an inch. So I have to compensate for that when I do my plates. This outside wall, I have a top of 83 and a half, I've got a bottom of 84, so that one's not too bad. It's only about a half inch difference. We're going to knock this down to seven foot six ceiling so we can have a little bit of pitch on the roof we have to stay below that window there i have a couple questions on the drawing it doesn't quite leave enough room for the way everything's supposed to be configured so i've got to call into the contractor to see exactly what they want to do but until then i'm going to work on getting these plates ready because the outside walls aren't going anywhere and uh cut some studs down so i can make a seven six wall as opposed to a full eight foot wall Okay, got my exterior plates laid out. This wall right here uh, is just going to be a wall. So there's not going to be any windows or anything in it. So this layout, okay, the layout of this wall starts three and a half inches over. So my sheeting, the OSB will break. See, I have 16 on center all the way along from the outside wall. I'll show you this wall has all the good stuff in it so this will have a California style corner which will be to the inside so that will give this something to nail to and a drywall nailer here is a king stud on 16 layout this will be a jack stud we'll have a 21 inch header here for a window another stud Here's another corner that's going to have a stud here, flat one here to the inside, which would be the nailer for the shower. One more on layout. Here's another corner that's going to be to the outside. So it'll be a stud like this and then a flat one like that, which gives me some meat to actually get sheathing in here and be able to nail it without damaging the siding any more than it's already damaged, I guess. And then in there will be one more wall, all with seven foot, one and a half inch studs with inch and a half, inch and a half, and then an inch and a half top plate. Give me a seven foot six finished framing. Okay, there's the first wall. I got a confession to make. I cut all my studs too short. I actually even assembled this wall with the wrong studs. So I had to disassemble it, cut the proper studs. I'll fess up to it, but I'll spare you the video of it. So I got my wall built, got it up, ran a bead of caulk along the wall and under the plate just to help seal it up a little bit. 
Here's my window. I've got a five degree bevel that pitches out so water can run out. Inside corner facing this way. I'll have outside corner here for my OSB to catch. My double top plate is on. I've held it back three inches, uh, three and nine sixteenths. So my double top plate from this outside wall will lap onto that. So the shower's moved again. It's not going there now. It's going to go here. So that reconfigures everything I had worked on here. But moving on, I'm going to start framing in this wall. Okay, there's the walls. I have to leave this open because I'm going to drag the one piece shower in through there. I do still have to frame my wall that will go yeah, somewhere in here for the shower. Um, I had to kind of pin these studs in. I couldn't stick frame it and stand it because I didn't have enough room. So caulked down the bottom plate, caulked along the house there, uh, put that outside nailer corner in and put my end stud in there, drop the top plate on, pinned all the studs in from there. So I think before I bring the shower in and risk destruction, I'm going to start figuring out where I'm going to need to cut away so I can get a ledger board in, start getting rafters and joists figured. Just like the floor, it'll have a joist along there, a board along there with hangers, then I have to figure out my height. We're coming in underneath the window. So it's basically going to be a flat roof, but it's going to have a very shallow, shallow pitch to it. Um, there'll be another ledger there with hangers that'll hold the rafters, so I guess figuring that is next. Okay, I got kind of in a crappy spot where I had to get this stupid one-piece shower in. So I'm going to have to work around this thing. Hopefully I don't damage it by doing something stupid. It won't be the first time I've done something stupid, but we'll see. Okay, I've taken off all along up here. I've even gotten this gutter and everything out of the way. Uh, and I think I know where my ledger board needs to go. And I roughly got a rafter pattern, which I'll show you. Well, let's jump out here and I'll show you. Okay, here's a rough rafter pattern. Uh, I had about 15 inches at the house in height over the course of 7 feet. I made it a 1.5 pitch is my slope. It's actually cut at a 1.5. That's not a perpendicular cut. So that steps me off about 10.5 inches um, from the top. And then I have... The difference here of four and a half, which gives me the 15. That's a very small bird's mouth there for that C cut, but that's what it is. And I think I've got about nine and a half inches, which will be my overhang. Um, so that's roughly it. I mocked it up once and it looked pretty good, so I think I'm going to get my ledger board in and uh, cut this, check it one more time. And if it's good, I'm going to run all my rafters. I'm going to do the rafters first before the joist just because it's a little easier for me to work above and work my way down. There's the outside. Like I said here to gain to gain thickness to match the house I held my framing all the way out so the OSB had to go all the way down. So this is as far as I could bring it down here. I did that down there because I couldn't get underneath to nail it. So I held it down at the top and then filled in. Down here I will fill in. I don't need to worry about that right now. Okay, that's in. Uh, it's already laid out. I'll attach the rafters and I think I'm going to put joist hangers on afterwards. Uh, and then that same setup will be along here for a ledger for ceiling joists. But like I said, I'm going to do that afterwards. So we can get these rafters cut and ready to install. And then I'll run them in and 
keep moving from there.